guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Sarah Liza bringing you another video. Um, today it's gonna be a really random like spew of like what has been happening. Um, a lot has been happening. So recently I edited a commercial which is finally out live. Um, I actually edited it last week and it was hectic, like hectic. <laughs> um, but it was so worth it. You know, I'm really, really thankful because um, I really learned a lot on the job and I'm just gonna talk about it really briefly and we are actually gonna view it um, together. To be honest, I wasn't really even planning to talk about this but today as I was scrolling my Facebook feed, a couple of my friends shared the video and when I saw it, I was like, damn, damn girl <laughs> because it looks like legit and uh, it's even funny how like the whole thing came about so i really wanted to share the story and the testimony of how like god really came through for me because it was a disaster but you know the, for what it is and how it turned out i really like it's a miracle guys it's a miracle so let me just flash back to what happened so a week ago um so i've I, so actually <laughs> i've actually been asked to um film oh yes so i so I actually been asked a while back to film the commercial and initially when I was asked, I was like, uh, I don't really want to film the commercial because I knew like budget was going into it and I, I've never like done any sort of broadcast um, videos. So I was very hesitant because that's like totally uncharted waters for me. So I kind of like turned down the opportunity. Um, and also I've been going through this situation where I've, sort of like shared a post on my Instagram but basically I really see you know I really want to be stepping out on what I really want to do which is like create my own content um, film my own videos and also to make more clothes I really have a heart to do that and it's really hard to juggle like a job and do that as well so as you guys know like if you work a lot like you know at the end of the day you're really tired and you don't want to do anything but just rest so i've spent like the last year and a half sort of battling that where i've not been really productive um so i really want to you know put an end to that um so i still keep really good relations with um the company that i worked with um yeah and then they approached me and i was kind of like mm, not 100 percent sure so anyways, um, they were really persistent and eventually I decided, okay, I'm going to just take on this project, but I wouldn't be filming, um, thankfully. <laughs> um, so I, I took on the role of filming behind the scenes and also to edit the video. So the week before, um, the photographer, who is the one who's like overseeing the branding and the direction of this campaign, um, she approached me and she was asking me, like are you sure you know you have everything in the bag you know what you're doing blah 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 and i said yes i'm pretty sure i'm not 100 percent confident but i'm sort of more or less know my bearings so we had to sit down and then we talked with the camera guy he was um, talking about his camera so he was using like this super huge broadcast sony camera and um, he told me that i would be working with s log 3 files which is basically like sony files um, i didn't realize that you know <laughs> so this is where the drama started so i had the assumption that okay final cut will handle s log 3 files i didn't realize that they didn't handle um, xmf files um which like it was a bit of a nightmare so on sunday the day after the shoot we got into the office and i sat down with the photographer and then we dropped the footage onto the timeline and then we got a shock because um final cut was like you know putting its own like grade and sort of like highlighting the video and like trying to work out a sort of color grade um on the clip which is not meant to be you know we really wanted it to be raw and unedited as it was filmed so we we had a bit of a like oh crap sort of moment and the photographer was kind of freaking out and you know like if i didn't to be honest, if I didn't have Jesus in my life, I would have been like, okay, there goes my career. Um, but you know, I really kept calm. Like, I, there was just a supernatural peace that was upon me and I was just really calm. And I said, you know what, I'm, I, we're going to figure it out and we're going to make it work. So we realized that um, when we dropped it onto the Premiere Pro timeline, we didn't have any issues, um, which is, 
it's weird that Final Cut had that, but anyways. So I have never used Premiere Pro in my life, and whenever I look at the interface, I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> um, so I, you know, the time came when I had to step up to the plate. It's really by the grace of God that um, I managed to edit the video. We also told by the camera guy that a lot of people in the industry use Premiere and DaVinci. So DaVinci is another software that also does editing, but it's known for color grading. So we would have to color grade the footage and then export that into um, Premiere Pro. So two entirely new softwares, a week of a timeline, and what do you do? <laughs> All I could do was pray, like seriously. So I showed the photographer that, okay, I this is my mess, I will fix it. So, um, so I started watching YouTube videos and really by the grace of God, I could pick up the software like within you know, one sitting. Um, by the end of Sunday, we managed to like grade the footage and have like a decent, like we, we managed to nut out what was um, the initial bumps, which was amazing because seriously, like I said, I would have lost my job. Um, so that was that. And then from there, it was like just back to back editing. Um, yeah, so it was hard because um, with such a large file, like it takes really, really long to render, and every minor adjustment would take like hours of rendering. Is that was like the most painful bit, it's, like having to do it in stages. Um, but yeah, I'm so thankful by the grace of God we managed to get it done. So um, yeah, we are gonna watch the commercial now, and bear in mind that it took a week to edit 30 seconds with a lot of hiccups. I would say it's really a miracle. And yeah, it, it just feels so surreal that I actually edited that. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. <laughs> also, I'll be talking about something else after, um, but we will watch the commercial for now. So I got my earphones. Okay, so we are going to YouTube. There we go, reinvent the way you shop. <laughs> I really like the whole wordplay on reinvent. You'll see in a bit what I'm talking about. But yeah, I because I wasn't familiar with um, Premiere Pro, I decided to edit all of that movement in Final Cut. And then I had to like export it. And it was like just going back and forth because we had to time it with the music. So um, I just want to say that, you know, in life, you need to learn to be flexible and adaptable because I think whenever you hold onto an idea too tightly, um, you're going to be like super wrecked when plans change and plans always change. Okay, We started off with like a storyboard and our end product is completely different with the initial storyboard. We filmed a lot of scenes which I'm not going to mention because we haven't like put it out there but we filmed a lot of scenes that were really fun and um, you know we really wanted to incorporate that into the video but um, through like, you know, back and back kind of like conversions with my bosses, you know, they really, at the end of the day, they wanted to make the first um, commercial really like clean cut. At the end of the day, if you don't learn to be adaptable, it's very hard for you to move on and like make progress. So I just want to say like, you know, just be an open hand when you like do whatever because <laughs> otherwise you're always going to be like really hung up on having things your way. So yeah, anyways, reinvent the way you shop. Let's check it out right now. It's so funny. I've heard this song like Return. over a hundred times. Reinvent the way you shop. How cool is that? Hundreds of premium brands. Rent thousands of looks. <sighs> so funny. Express delivery and easy returns. Reinvent the way you shop. Rent, wear, return at glancorner.com.au <laughs> Feels so surreal. Um, so I know that they're actually going to like broadcast it on television. I don't know when exactly, but if you actually do come across it, if you live in Australia and you do come across it, let me know in the comments down below because that would be really cool and like surreal. But yeah, it's really funny. So this whole carousel idea like didn't really come to mind until like I was like editing it and it's 
It was interesting. I've never done this sort of carousel effect, but basically you have to work with layers and it's kind of like if you work with Photoshop, it's like blending different layers. And with video, it is a lot trickier because there's like moving subjects. There were like a couple of things that we had to mask out and also like the layers weren't working with one another. Um, yeah, if you work with layers, you'll understand that sometimes like your highlights get like really funky. So um, it was a lot of masking and like tracking shots with the mask. So challenges, but you know, we overcame. By the grace of God, we overcame and I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. So praise the Lord. And with that, <laughs> with that, so... Um, I got myself, <laughs> treat yourself, I got myself the Laowa um, 7.5 f2 lens. I've been wanting a prime lens, actually a wide angle prime lens for quite a while now. Um, initially I got the 15mm, so the Pen Leica 15mm. Um, it's great, it's really good on like the gimbal, which I actually tried out for the first time <laughs> the other day. A bit of a nightmare and a struggle, I would say, so definitely like need pro more practice in that. But um, the Prime, yeah, so the 15mm is great, but it's not super wide. So I actually got it last year when I went to Korea and I filmed a little segment, um, like a talking vlog. So that's where I used it. But I realized I didn't really like how it's really cropped in. Um, I realized more and more that I really like the angle to be super wide whenever I'm doing like a selfie sort of mode. Um, so I decided I was really tossing back and forth between like this lens and a couple others. So I was tossing between the Pen Leica 8-18 and that's a variable um, aperture which to me is annoying. Because I work primarily with like the uh, Olympus 12-40 f2.8, it's fixed and I love it. Whenever you zoom, you don't have like um, the video darkening at like um, tighter angles. I'm really comfortable with fixed apertures and for me, I think that was one of the biggest um, no nos for the Pen Leica 8 18, and then there was like the 7 to 14 Panasonic as well. But the aperture is like not as low as I'd like it to be. So this Lawa's f2, the Pen like uh, the Panasonic 7 14 is f4, and it's just not great for low light situations. I'm the kind of person that would like to invest in like glass, um, like camera gear that like serves so like multi-functions so um yeah that didn't really cut for me and then we have like the olympus 7 to 14 but it's really heavy i think it's about 500 grams um which i struggled the whole idea why i got like a vlog camera separate to my gh5 was because my gh5 body is like really robust and sturdy but it's very heavy so if whenever we do like one hand sort of filming it's tiring and that's why I don't really vlog that much is because it's so like heavy to hold it up so um, even with this it was still pretty heavy but like I said I didn't really like how tight it looks uh, most people are okay with it being like cropped like the usual sort of uh, vlog sort of like frame but I like it even wider so I decided to purchase this Lawa lens um, I haven't tested it, so we will be testing it in a moment where I'll pop it on and then you can see how wide this actually is. Um, with it being f2, it's really great for astrophotography. As a micro four thirds body, your camera will never, you know, amount to like the greatness of like full frame sensors. But I think, you know, for what I have, I really love my GH5 and I'm not planning to sell it at all. So um, yeah, you just work with what you have. Talking about the commercial, so with that, I uh, got a bit of ka <laughs> One week of editing earns you a bit of money. Uh, praise God, because like seriously, uh, so funny. So at the start of the year, I knew I was going to Japan. I had a rough idea and I knew it was going to be of a struggle because I wasn't, as a freelancer, you don't really work like regular hours. It really depends on your job. Um, yeah, so I knew that mm, saving up the ka and the coins will be a bit like tricky, but I really just prayed about it. And yeah, I'm so thankful that the Lord provided, like seriously, what I've earned has covered like fully my expenses for the trip. And also, uh, <laughs> I also got my tax return back, which is another like couple of like case back, which is so good because I'm like seriously going on a major tech haul. So apart from the Lawa lens, I actually put 
in order for the G85. It's going to be my B cam because I've always wanted, um, you know, I like it when you have like different angles when you're shooting so it doesn't look very static. I've, you know, I've really not like how it's always been one camera set up for myself. So I really want to change it up. Uh, and with that, I actually sold my Canon. So I sold my G7X Mark II. Um, I wasn't super happy with it. Like it's a really great camera, but I think for someone who operates a lot with like dials and stuff, like I really wanted more control. And also, um, there were a couple of things like with Canon and Panasonic, you have to like color match it in post, um, which I'm not like super great at color correcting. I do a decent job, but like not super. Um, yeah, so that was an issue, but also, I don't know, I just really wanted like something more comparable to the GH5. But if you're in the tech world, you know that like GH5 is like pretty expensive, it's like 2000 over for like the body. Um, and I didn't really want to spend another two grand because I'm hoping to get um, a drone. So I decided to get the GH5, which is about half the price, but like comparable. And also, I really want to use it as my vlog camera, so it'll be paired with this baby. I, I cannot wait to take them uh, to Japan, but I'm gonna look like an idiot with like two cameras. So, but yeah, this will be like my B cam. I mean, my not my B cam, my B roll baby. And then I will have like my vlogging baby. But yeah, so I'm super excited. I so like initially I was gonna do like this whole video with like the two camera setup, but um I was a bit like sad that they didn't have it in stock, so I have to wait till next week. And also I have more lights coming in. Also I forgot, so I actually <laughs> brought my weighing scale, and to show you, um so this is my lightest lens. Currently I have it. <laughs> this is like a fake cap. But um, I have it mounted on with a thread adapter. So this is actually a thread reducer. So the Olympus 12 to 40, which I own, has a 62 mil thread size, and um, this Leica lens, pen Leica, um, is a 40, 46. <laughs> um, and thankfully, um, the Lao is a 46 as well. I didn't realize that it was a 46, which is great because now I can adapt my. Um, ND filters onto it without a problem and also I would say this is a little bit heavier than this so this weighs 163, 64 grams they're about without the cap which is not gonna weigh much and then this weighs 123 so this is slightly lighter um, yeah this feels a lot more solid than this um, and I'm super excited to use that um, with the G85. We will be testing the field of view on my GH5 right now for this video. Hey guys, so this is how wide the 7.5 is. I am just like, it's just so hilarious because actually the camera is not too far. It's maybe like, I don't know, an one and a half arm's length from me. Yeah, one and a half. And yeah, it looks like so wide and you can even see the frames up top. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. I haven't actually like filmed much with it, but just now as I was holding my GH5, I noticed that I don't have to stretch out my arms all the way to like have a decent um, frame. Cause I remember like previously when I was using my 15 mil, I would have to like stretch my hands out all the way. And it was just, it wasn't fun because as I said before, the GH5 body is like really heavy. So yeah, it's kind of like holding weights out <laughs> right now it's just not very comfortable so i'm excited to have that mounted to my g85 another cool feature about the gh5 is that you don't have to go under your settings to um, do a without lens sort of um, change in settings because i remember when i was at the store there was this um, option under the menu where you would have to like disengage the lens sort of interactions um, on the camera um, but we don't have to do that for the GH5 so if anything when you power on the GH5 um, a menu actually comes up and tells you to key in the focal length um, so I keyed in 7.5 and I thought that was a really cool feature um, but yeah super stoked about this oh yes so as I was mentioning so I'm actually wanting to get a drone by now I've mentioned it a few times um, yeah, so I was actually really um, wanting to get the Mavic Air, which came out at the start of this year. I was really glad 
actually last year, end of last year, I was wanting to get the Mavic Pro, but I wasn't entirely sold on it. Um, thankfully, I didn't really have the money <laughs> to get it because I actually bought my iMac um, and I like bumped up the specs so it cost a little more. So, um, and my dad was like, don't get a drone because you're not going to use it. But I'm still really bent on using the drone. My sister got the Mavic Pro. Um, I've actually never played with it, but from like what I've seen on YouTube and stuff, I don't really like the quality of it. Like, and then the Mavic Air came out and I was like, whoa, this thing is like amazing. Um, I like how it's like 100 megabits instead of like, I think it was 60 on the Mavic Pro. So that's really cool. And also like the quality looks a lot better on the Mavic Air. So I was actually really sold on that. But um, just a few days ago, my brother actually told me that there were like rumors of the Mavic Pro 2 coming out. I didn't realize it was like that soon. And with the time of like the commercial and the tax return, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my time. This is the time to get the drone. So I'm really just waiting on the announcement. I know they'll be announcing it on 23rd of August. It'll be interesting. And then when it comes out, um, I'll see like in comparison to the Mavic Air, like what's the price difference and also the specs. Um, from like the rumors, it seems really amazing. So like 4K 60p with like a bigger sensor, Hasselblad camera, yeah, yeah, yada. Um, so it'll be interesting. So if it, like I know it definitely costs like maybe double the price of the Mavic Air, but I don't mind investing in it because I'm like the kind of person that you know I don't want to buy a lot of the same things. Or same type of things so i don't want to own like two drones because it's like stupid <laughs> like i can just live with one and just like you know really maximize on one so yeah so either be the mavic air or the mavic pro 2 but i'm more leaning on the mavic pro 2 so yeah sadly japan probably would not feature any drone footage but that's okay because i just learned that my family would be going to japan sometime like end of the year ish so that'll be really exciting so by then i would have my drone and then hopefully i know that japan has like drone laws as well so yeah, we'll just have to see what we can work with. But yeah, so anyways, enough of the rambling. This video has been so long, 24 minutes. I am definitely gonna edit and cut this down, hopefully. Um, yeah, I was gonna like do another segment of this video, but I kind of feel like I've been talking so much. I don't really wanna like lengthen the vlog anymore. So yeah, so that's it for this video. Hopefully in the next one, it'll be a lot brighter um because i would have like more lighting situation under control and yeah and probably we'll see like a two camera action going on thank you if you actually stayed till the end good on you um you must have pretty good attention span because <laughs> i know i've been talking a lot uh, but yeah i'm super excited yeah i'll catch you in my next one it'll be next saturday that's something i really really need to work towards one video a week at least. So it'll be next Saturday. I'll see you then. Bye.